Web pages consist of several different components. We've enumerated four that are quite common. The hypertext markup language, cascading style sheets or CSS, JavaScript, some code that comes down with the page, and images. So how do we create these things and what do they actually look like and mean? So let's look at some simple examples. We'll start with HTML. HTML is the hypertext markup language. It's part of the web standard. It's one of the things that uh, put the Sir in front of Sir Berners-Lee. Um, or, or Tim, Sir, Sir, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. There we go, I got it. Um, so, you know, the, the web protocol consisted of, or, or the original web standard consisted of the HTTP protocol, which is used to exchange documents, um, the names that we put in the browser, the URL, and HTML, the hypertext markup language. So it's a particular markup language that is used by browsers to take text documents that they get from a web server and transform them into the documents that you see in front of you in the browser. Let's look at an example of how this is done. So for this example, I'm going to use a tool which is quite fun. I would encourage you to, to check it out. It's called JS Fiddle. So I'm, I'm at jsfiddle.net. And when you go to JS Fiddle, it opens up a couple different panes in your browser. This is a pane where you can write HTML. This is a pane where you can write some JavaScript, and I've moved that to the bottom because we don't need it for this example. And here's a pane where you can write some CSS. And I'll, I'll scroll this up a little bit because we don't need it for this example either. For this example, I'm just going to write HTML or show you, really, the relationship between the HTML I've already written and how the page looks. So um, JS Fiddle does a little bit for you. So there's certain elements of the page that I don't have to write in JS Fiddle that you would have to write if you were serving a real web page. But the body of the page is where the markup that you see in the browser is contained. There are other parts of the page that contain metadata about the page, like the title that shows up in the browser address, um, the browser tab bar, and things like that. Uh, but let's focus on the body, because that's the body is the part of the page that contains the content that you see, typically. So this is a pretty simple web page. Um, here's how it looks. So if I served this page from a website and you visited it, here's what it would look like in your browser. Now, you can see that the browser has done some things to the text. So if you look over here, uh, here's the HTML text. And HTML, the HTML markup language consists of various types of tags that are opened and then closed. So this is the body tag. You can see I've opened a body tag up here. Tags are in between these brackets. So it's open bracket, tag name, close bracket. You'll see that those tags, they don't appear in the output. So I don't see a body the body tag anywhere. All the tags that are part of the HTML have been removed by the browser, but the browser uses them as information to determine how the page should look. So in the, in the case of the body tag, what the body tag tells the browser is this is the content should appear in the page body. The H1 tag says this is an important heading. It's the most important heading. H1, H2, H3, these are heading tags. Uh, and what it says is that this text that appears in between the beginning and the ending of the tag is important. Now tags, this is how a tag opens. Brackets, tag name. The way it closes is quite similar, except I have this forward slash. So this closes the H1 tag. So the contents of the H1 tag start from here, and they go over here. It consists of this sentence. This is the first page section. When you look at the uh, way that the browser has rendered the page, you'll see that this is the first page section is in the largest font. It did that because it's in the H1 tag. And what H1 says is that this, con this content is important. And what the browser does in response is makes it bigger than the other content on the page. It's sort of a natural thing to do. So next to the, below the H1 tag is an H2 tag. That also uh, is another heading, although it's considered less important than an H1. And you'll see that it's slightly smaller than the H1 in the, the rendered view over here. Um, the rest of the page consists of a couple of other elements that are quite common on HTML pages. This is a paragraph. So a paragraph starts with a P tag and, and closes with this forward slash P. So this, can, this defines a paragraph. Now within a paragraph, 
um, line breaks are not important. So for example, if I change this paragraph to insert a line break here and then re-render the page, you'll see that this paragraph that's been rendered still continues like this. And the browser will figure out where the edge of the screen is and roll the text appropriately when it needs to. Um, but you can see that there's this difference between how things look over here and how things look over here in terms of white space and other things. Um, so I've created a second paragraph. Now when I open and close a new paragraph, the browser responds by putting a bit of extra white space in between those the way you would expect in text, right? That's how paragraphs are typically set off from each other. Um, and then the final element I threw up here just for fun is a little bit of a list. So this is an, a, a UL tag opens the list and then a UL consists of a series of LI tags, that's a list item. So by format, by writing markup like this, what I see in the browser is this right here, first item, second item. That's the content of those li tags. You'll notice that the, it, the browser used bullets to mark that up. If I change this um, ol tag to a, sorry, if I change this ul tag to an ol tag, you'll notice that they that this is formatted using numbers rather than bullets. So this is an example of kind of the relationship between HTML on the left and the, the pages is actually rendered on the right. Now. One of the important things to keep in mind here is that there are still a lot of decisions about how this page is being rendered that aren't contained in the HTML, and that's intentional. So for example, what fonts do I use? Um, how much space is there between these various items? You know, how large are various elements? Those are all uh, stylistic aspects of the page that are not incorporated in the HTML. Instead, those come in through a second part of the page that is known as a cascading style sheet. And that's what we'll talk about next.